So now that we've wrapped up some of the basics in terms of definitions and we actually looked at a very simple random process, the sinusoid with a random amplitude and phase, let's go ahead and start looking at some common random processes and communications theory. The first one we want to look at is this asynchronous binary signaling waveform. So let's take a look at what that is. So asynchronous binary signaling, this is a random process and a sample function of it might look something like this. So it's a signal that toggles between two values and it toggles between these two values with a shape of a rectangular pulse. So this looks like a whole bunch of square waves. It's a square wave basically. And the width of that square wave is width capital T. So that's kind of like the symbol time or signal period we often use in comms theory that we denote it as capital T. So that's how long each one of these rectangular pulses lasts for. And it toggles between two values. That's why we call this binary signaling. So it can either be a positive pulse with amplitude positive A, or it could be a negative pulse with amplitude minus A. So for now, we're going to assume that it toggles between two values whose magnitude is the same, A, but just differing in sign. So because it's just two values, it's binary. And actually for this, if you want to be very specific, this is called polar signaling or antipodal signaling because it actually toggles between the negative of the values, positive A, negative A. They're the same value, just negatives of each other. So this is what the waveform looks like, but these amplitudes are random values. So each amplitude, which will denote the A ends, so A is capital because it's a random quantity, and the N denotes that's kind of the nth pulse, is always one of these values. It's either A or minus A, but we just don't know which one. So it, the amplitudes are random quantities. We could end up with a random process sketch like this that is maybe positive pulses for long periods of time or negative pulses for long periods of time. Exactly what it looks like will be dependent on whatever sample function we end up grabbing, but this is just a representative one, what it looks like. So why is this called asynchronous binary signaling? This part's kind of easy to understand. It's just this kind of square waveform that toggles back and forth between minus A and positive A randomly, and it does this every capital T time units. What about the asynchronous part? Well, there's another parameter of this waveform that we denote D, and D is basically the displacement with respect to the time origin. So when I look at this picture here on the left, it sure would be nice if the time origin was right here, kind of lined up right at a pulse boundary, but that doesn't have to be the case for this scheme because it is asynchronous. In fact, where we are relative to the time origin is a random quantity that we denote D. So maybe for this particular one that I've sketched, the time origin is actually right here. It doesn't necessarily have to line up with a pulse boundary. So for this sample function, maybe we have this amount of displacement with respect to the time origin. In general, this d is a uniform random variable between minus t over 2 and t over 2. So where the time origin is here at kind of our middle pulse is itself a random quantity, and that's why we call it asynchronous, because the pulse boundaries aren't synchronized to the time origin. We can actually write the math for this type of a random process. x of t is just an infinite collection of pulses. So that's why we write down the sum from minus infinity to infinity of all these different pulse amplitudes. And each of those pulse amplitudes weights kind of our pulse shape, which in this case is a pulse function or rectangle function, which I often denote as the pi function. It's a pulse function. Its total width of each pulse is t, and each of these pulses is a function of time, but they're shifted up and down the time axis in multiples of capital T. So we have minus nt to account for the fact that the nth pulse is shifted n times t time units away from the time origin. And then there's also a bulk phase, or a time shift of d due to the asynchronous nature of this random process. So this right here is an equation that models this random process. Just in case you don't remember, the pulse function looks like this. It's just a rectangular window function. It exists from minus t over 2 to t over 2, and we can tell that because 
whatever this denominator is, that is the total width of the function. So its total width is t. It is centered at time zero, so it exists from minus t over two to t over two. We have some questions about this random process. So this is the random process we want to study. One question we might ask is what is the mean function of this random process? We also might want to know what is the autocorrelation function of this random process. So very similar questions that we just asked for our sinusoid random process, but now we're going to ask these same questions for this kind of more practical communication signal that we often encounter in digital communications. So let's go ahead and do some of these computations in the next video.